If you have your Bibles this morning, we're going to go to a familiar Psalms. Psalms 115, to me, is very familiar. I ministered from it several times, but waking this morning and seeking the Lord for what do we say in this season. Um, and he dropped in me increase, 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 increase. It is in Psalms 115 and verse 14. Before we get to increase, let me ask the question, and maybe it's just me, but did January go real fast? I mean, it's like, like we just said, Happy New Year. And it's February. Yeah. <laughs> Moving right along. Psalm 115 and verse 14, I'm going to start there. Then I'm going to move around in the context and bring us to the end of a praise break. Amen? Amen. May the Lord, I'm reading from the New King James. May the Lord give you increase. Somebody holler, increase. increase. Somebody say, more money, more money. No, 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 no. Hold, 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 hold. Let's read the Bible. Let's read the Bible. May the Lord give you increase more and more, you and your children. All the parents want to get these children out your pockets. Child, hallelujah. <laughs> May the Lord give you increase more and more, you and your children. I'm going to talk for a few minutes and read you, walk you through this little psalms about divine increase. Divine increase. The Lord is speaking here to us as the spiritual Israel, but he's speaking also to the children of Israel. The children need to be refocused. As we as parents and you that are rearing young people, sometimes you give them too much, too soon. And it's good to give them a lot of good things so they can know that they don't have to settle for just anything. Fathers raise their daughters to make sure they have a high bar level. If you're still dating the guy and all he can take you to is McDonald's, that's okay. But after a while, you got to move on up. If a father's being a real father, you try to stretch that child to make sure they want better. Amen. Not making her a golden. No, no, I didn't say that. Listen to my message. Not making her too gold or golden or grand, but giving her a high bar level for herself. That's a weak clap. I need, hold on. I need 50 women to snap your fingers and say, oh, I'm valuable. Oh, very valuable. And well, as a young man, he should have a high esteem about himself to not settle for anything. The children had lost their way, and here God had to refocus his people in this context. They had gotten caught up with idols. Idols. Idols that could not help them. They began to idolize so many other things, and their imagery got off. Hmm. I use it often, so I'll use it again. My camera works good, but if the lens is smudgy, that's what the picture's going to look like. But I forget sometimes to wipe off the lens so I can have a good picture. So this morning, I want to just wipe off your lens a little bit so you can have a good picture of divine increase. They understood the idols could not help them, but yet still they were always around people who had idols. This is not a scripture, but I see in my wrong scripture commentation that many people walk by sight not by faith but the believer walks by faith not by sight substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen but yet possessed because God said is mine as a believer walks by faith not by sight sight would discourage me to think this is never going to happen but faith tells me don't wait till the battle is over <laughs> praise and shout right now that gotten out of sight and they could not understand why they not, were not being blessed. The idols could not produce anything because it was God that had created all things. 
little Bible class in Psalms 115, verse 4 through 8 particularly. It said, do not trust in these idols. Oh, Israel, trust in the Lord. He is their, thy, their, your helper, and he is your shield. He is their helper. He is their shield or their protection. Trust in the Lord. Oh, how some Aaron's trust in the Lord. He is thine helper and thine shield. He's telling them, trust in the Lord. It's not your wit, your wisdom, your, your, your know-it-all. It's the Lord's has been your protector and your shield and the one that you can trust in. Oh, you who fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. For the Lord has been mindful of us. He will bless us. Verse 12. Fear him, reverence the Lord, and put him before anything else. Mindful means that he has remembered us. Sometimes we feel that God has forgotten us. You can go through some hard, rough patches in life. You think that God has forgotten all about you. I am sensitive to this hour of the world that we live in and seeing the non-recession, recession, non-famine, non non, uh, uh, no famine, famine, but no famine, uh, decline, but no decline. But look at the record. I grew up on a farm for a little while. We didn't have to worry about eggs. We had chickens. And we would go out there in the morning, get the brown eggs or the white eggs. Didn't matter, brown was a better. Bring them eggs in and here come breakfast. It was good to know that you could get and have access to it when you wanted. But you go to the grocery store today and get a carton of eggs. You want to take two out because you just want breakfast. You go to the counter and say, I just got two this morning. <laughs> a carton of eggs, almost $12? Am I wrong? Am I near right? I was in shock when I saw them at $9. Kim, I said, eggs, $9? Oh man, we're not gonna have no Easter this year. It's gonna be just gone. <laughs> Kids gonna be confused. What do you mean no Easter eggs? But God is mindful of us even during the time of famine and financial strain and financial difficulties. God's thinking about you, Clinton. He's thinking about his people. He knows where you're at. And he knows he's going to get you through this. Yeah. Mindful, he remembers. Say, God remembers me. Amen. He knows my name. He knows, he knows what I'm going through. He knows and he's going to make up the difference. He'll make up the difference. Somehow, God will have people bless you you didn't think was even going to bless you. It'll come and you didn't know where it's going to come from. I, I, the Lord just told me to do this for you. It's like, what? For me? Yes, for you. Watch this. I'm open testimony service for five, uh, for five seconds. Who got a blessing this week you were not expecting? Stand up quickly. Now, you that are sitting down, there's a witness. God still blessing. Be seated. He always keeps doing a little bit that you know that he's mindful of his people. So I don't get disturbed when somebody else is being blessed. I just know that I'm next. Because if he did it for you, he'll do it also for, for me. So watch this text in Hebrews 6 and 10, thinking of the Lord's mindfulness. Hebrews 6 and 10 says it like this. When you think of the Lord's mindfulness, God is not unjust to forget your work and labor of love. Hebrews 6 and 10. He's not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which you have shown towards his name and that you have ministered to the saints and do minister as you look out for the saints the people of God and other people that are in need. God is looking out for you. He is mindful of you. He remembers you when other people don't. It's in this that the psalmist is trying to bring God's people back to a point of remembering. These idols didn't do it. And again, back then they would carve out things that looks like an idol. As the Lord dropped this message on me, <laughs> literally, coming out the door this morning, I was thinking about an idol that we used to have called Mr. Potato Head. <laughs> Don't worry, Gen Z, it's real. Go, go and Google it. You know. 
We used to take this thing and it started us with, with a blank head. And he had to depend on me and how I felt that morning, whether or not the ear was going to be on his forehead <laughs> or where it was supposed to be. So I would play with him, put his mouth back here on his neck and put his nose down on his chin. And you can do that for Mr. Potato Head. You can play with him anyway. And after a while, you go on and make him like he's supposed to be and put everything in his proper order. In other words, Mr. Potato Head depended on me to put his mouth in the right place. After I got him all fixed up looking like he was supposed to look, he still couldn't speak. So an idol is anything that you just give all your attention to and doll it all up, but it still can't speak. Matter of fact, it can't walk. And if it had hands, it can't use it. This thing was just silly. Then I would take Mr. Potato Head and make him play Humpty Dumpty and set him on the edge and say, now let's see what's going to happen. <laughs> everything falls off of him. I have to put him back together. What do you have in your life? That every morning you get up, you got to put it together. Every time you drop it, it falls apart. You rub it on it and rub it on it and make it look good, but it can bring you no value. It's just constantly depreciating and declining every day. And you're just making it a grand event. But it has no power that it can deliver you in time of deliverance. Idols could be anything that you become more glorified in than becoming glorified in God. The Lord said he was mindful of them because they got off track. And he understood that they needed to be refocused. So he said to them, he says, I'm going to do something for you and I'm going to increase you. And I know you can't do this with your idols, but I'm going to increase you. I'm going to increase you more and more because I'm mindful of you. In verse 13 of the Psalms 115, says, all you that fear the Lord, if you reverence the Lord, then this testimony is open for you. Both small and great. Watch it here. He brings those who fear the Lord to those that are wealthy and rich and those that are small and seem like do not have much at all. But when it comes to God's increase, everybody's equal. Mm. He's going to increase the small and great, but he's going to increase you according to your ability to handle it. I want divine increase, but I don't have the capacity to hold it. But I'm preparing myself to receive more from the Lord. The increase is going to happen, or the increase is to add, to flourish, and to give more. More and more increase. The increase, watch it, more joy, more grace, more favor, more health, more strength, or whatever you need increase in. You might just need increase to not be depressed. I need to get up one day and say, it's going to be all right. I don't have to keep looking at my life and what I'm going through and make that the staple of my life when I have divine increase. God increases this morning. He said, Clinton, increase comes through a process. And the more I began to increase you, haters will show up. They're Mr. Potato Heads. I'm sorry. They can't help you, but they're not going to let you free to go and be what God wants you to be. In the words of Dr. Lodoris McLean, I think it's her, said, while people are talking about your business, you handle your business. <laughs> while they're trying to run you down, you just keep running up and give them a longer ways to get to you. But don't reduce yourself to the level of somebody's ignorant conversation. Tell them to grow up and put some sense back in your potato, I'm sorry, some sense back in your mind because you didn't increase me, you cannot decrease me. God has increased me. More and more. The devil knows it. That's why you're in church this morning. Because God has increased you. And he's mad. He's so mad. Like, I thought I had you done. No, I woke up with another breath of air. And I promised myself, if I have breath, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise will be in my mouth. Now, your neighbor's sitting quietly, but I'm going to get to them in a moment because they don't understand that you understand that if divine increase is going to come, it's going to come out of my action and my attitude. I must act 
or I must set forth, I must present myself like I am a blessing going somewhere. So I don't wait to act upon how I feel. I act upon how I feel by what he said. I'm going to increase you this year. Now watch it, not just an increase, more and more. I'm going to exceed your wildest imagination this year. I need 50 people to say this year. I'm going to show you what I can do with your life. I'm going to show you what I can do with your life. Look around, tell somebody there's lunch in the room and a blessing in the multitude. A little boy came to the time of the feeding of the 5,000, and Jesus said, well, what are we going to do here? He said, let's go. And the Philip said, we can't go buy enough bread to feed these people. He said, that's okay. It's enough right here in the room. I always marvel at this story. Well, why would this young little boy pack his lunch and feel like he got to share with everybody? Because God has set this boy up to become a blessing in a multitude. I believe prophetically right now out of my mouth and even online, God has set somebody up to be a blessing in the multitude. You thought you were being blessed just for yourself, but I need you to put your hands up. I got my lunch. Y'all ain't working with me. Come say, put it like this. I got my lunch. And it's going to bless a whole multitude just with this little. Let me end this story. Now, I don't know, Isaac, where the blessing came from when Jesus took it, broke it, blessed it, and gave it. But somewhere in between these two fish and five loaves of bread, when he took it, he blessed it, he broke it, and he gave it. And they ate it. So somewhere between the lunch pail and to the mouths of people, God begins to bless and multiply. So somewhere between you sowing and giving, trusting God's word on your way to the supper, in between here and there, a blessing is about to take place. Let me make you let us let me see it better. Somewhere between you got dressed this morning and got out that car, walked into this parking across this parking lot, came to your seat, sat down and pushed your Self to the worship service, sitting there now hearing the end of the message, somewhere between the parking lot, no, somewhere between the somewhere between the kitchen coffee and the house getting dressed from the parking lot, walking in this room, telling them I didn't come but to get blessed. I came, I came, I came to get my blessing. I came to get my blessing. I came to get my blessing. I'm glad you're here, but I didn't come for you this morning. I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I came to get what God promised me. I need 50 people to holler in. Increase, 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 increase. Uh, I'm going to do it, Clinton, more and more. You're going to flourish this year. The process is in Exodus 1 and 12, the process. And the more, Exodus 1 and 12, God's people Israel, and the more they afflicted them, haters, the more they multiplied and grew. So if people are bothering you, you're going to have to change your wardrobe and upgrade your mindset because God's about to make you step out a brand new person. If you're not being hated on, don't worry about increase. But if increase is happening in your life, everybody's not going to like it. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew and they were the dear people of God, they increased more and more. Back in the text, you see here the increase that happens is the increase in verse 14, Psalms 151, 115, I'm sorry. It was more and more, it was flourishing, it was a process. You are blessed of the Lord which made heaven and earth. Now, it's going to go a little deeper into the Bible class and it come out. This increase is not coming from Stimmy or from Uncle Joe. This increase is not coming from the government, nor my job or my business. This increase is coming from the Lord. <laughs> the Lord will increase you more and more. You, you are blessed of the Lord, which made heaven and earth. Now, that's somebody's rap, rap to grab, say, in heaven and on earth. 
So Pastor Al, she's telling me that it's not going to be in the sweet by and by. Yes, it's going to be in the sweet by and by. But it's going to also be in the sweet now and now. Because God has heaven and earth in his control to bless his people. He says further here in, in the King James, I think I'm reading from, uh, um, you should be blessed from the Lord of heaven and earth in verse 15. He says, the heavens, even the heavens are the Lord's in verse 16. Are you there? But the earth he had given to the children of man. Tell your neighbor, step up and take your rightful place. My children run this earth. I'm walking through somebody's faith lane right now. You are the child of God that should be large and in charge because you have been blessed by the Lord to increase. Heaven belongs to me, but I gave the earth to you. If the earth is yours, then take dominion over it. Rule it like it's yours. Own it like it's yours. Occupy it like you got. Increase it like it's yours. I want you to increase this earth more and more. I want little bitty yous walking around everywhere. I want people to see that your life is a reflection of the increase of God. That may have been too deep for somebody right there, but God had given it to you, so why are you sitting back like you don't own it? You have to move in faith like I already got it. It's already mine. God has increased me to operate within this earthly spare. Gave it to the children of men. And that's our position. Now, before I close, I want to talk to the silent voices. The enemy have shut your mouth up like you don't own nothing. Make you feel like God has not done anything to increase your life. He says the dead, verse 17, praise not the Lord. Back up. I just told you God's going to increase you more and more. I just told you God says the earth is yours to run. I just told you you're large and in charge. But the dead spiritually can't say nothing. But those that are alive can open your mouth and say, oh yes, he will. Yeah, you're catching it. Those that got a mouth... And that's not an idol can open your mouth. Oh, yeah, that's me. That would be me. I'm the one that God has increased. Pastor House, everything I got, God gave me. All that I ever would possess, he gave to me. No sense of me sitting around like I was brilliant to do this on my own. You not, come on, come on. Give somebody half a time. You know it was the Lord. If God didn't do it, it ain't going to last. But if God did it, then you're not dead. The dead praise not the Lord, neither any that go down into silence. Silence completely are those that have been buried completely. But the spiritual dead don't know how to praise the Lord. Note when you have celebrations that everyone has a different temperament and personality. But if somebody sit at your celebration too long, quiet, you go ask them, is everything all right? You all right? You good? Are you good? I mean, you, you ain't smiled since you've been here. Ever since you came in, you're looking like you're ready to just hurt everybody. Are you okay? I'm, this is just how I am. Really? All the time? Can you at least smile? Oh, I get it. I get it. You just have a reserved personality. Okay, how does this $100 bill make you look? Oh, glory. How, now you know your language. So, but the dead doesn't praise him. They have nothing to say. So don't try to get worship team, worship team. Don't try to get people that are already dead. No spirit, no life, no anointing. You're trying to sing them into glory. They ain't going to move. Trust me when I tell you. I've been preaching for three decades. I don't preach the dead fool. I preach the people that want life. People that can have an ear to hear what the Spirit's saying to the church. Oh, God, put your hand on somebody's shoulders. Don't sit there too long. They'll have a committal in here. They'll push you over in a hole. You better open your mouth and give God a praise. Give God a praise. Divine increase. Look to your left and right. Say, I ain't dead. I'm yet alive. I can feel him in my... No, no, no. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. Joke them, bro. The dead can't do it. Neither can the silence. Here it comes for the silent voices. But we will bless the Lord from this time forward and forevermore. 
praise the Lord. I want to know who are we? Those that have been redeemed. Those that have been blood washed. Saved and should have been let go of. We that when nobody else could turn it around, God turned it around. We that got some kind of X in our life. X drug at, X crazy, X making no sense, X confused, X depression, X, 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 X. We that God has delivered out of something. If you're not moving yet, you have not come out like you should have come out. You that your life was jacked up, tore up, and messed up, but God reached down in there and put you all the way up. We, we that know last night I was crying, but joy has come in my morning. We will forever praise the Lord's parents. Let your babies know, no matter what it looks like forever, Praise the Lord. No matter how heavy you may feel, give God a praise. No matter how dark it may look, give God a praise. We might be on fumes, but give God a praise. Tell sickness in your body, we gonna praise God this morning. Tell depression you should have never came to church. We about to cast you out. Praise the Lord. How long? church forever. That means all day long all I hear coming out your mouth is praise. That means all year long all I hear coming out your mouth is praise. That means every day you wake up all I want to hear coming out of your mouth is praise. Praise. That's what I do. Cough into the medicine cabinet, but praise. Getting this fever out of my body, but praise. Wondering what we're going to eat, but praise. Looking at the gas needle, but praise. Sitting with my family in church, but we praise. It ain't all pretty, but one thing the devil can't take is your praise. Your praise will deliver you. Your praise will bring you out. Let's say devil, wrong house, wrong believer, wrong faith walker. Give God a prayer. Go fist bump three people, tell me increase. 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 Come on, get on your feet if you're able to stand. Bump fist one person and hold it. And say, listen. Come on, y'all. Get you know where your fist is at. Ball your fist up. Go ahead. Bump my fist. Bump fist. There you go. Bump one fist. Tell them this year. Your joy. Is it going to increase? You may be happy now, but you're going to be hilarious when it comes about March. I didn't say December. I said about March. You're going to be laughing all the way to the bank because God sent me to tell you, I'm going to re increase your life. You're about to get more and more. what he's done, not what he's going to do, but what's coming right now. I feel increased on my life. Woo! Oh, your hands up. Divine increase. Devil, I know you mad. 
because you can't stop it. Like the flood waters of Noah, you couldn't stop it. Like fire, you can't stop it. These are forces, two that I know, that are uncontrollable. You can't stop water, and you can't stop fire, and you can't stop my blessing. Because God said it. It's on the way. I need some radical folk. Throw your hands up and say, here it comes. Hit me with it, God. Divine. Increase. Increase. One last proclamation. I want you to catch this message. Tell your neighbor, the preacher said, the dead can't praise him. I ain't dead. I got a mouth. I'm not a potato head. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm not an idol. I know who I am and whose I am. I will holler (laughs) till I get my breakthrough. Put your hands up. Exodus 17, I get you through this all the time. As long as Moses' hands were up, they prevailed. Israel was winning. As long as your hands are up. Keep your hands up, keep your high spirit in your life. In the name of Jesus. This hands up is just a prophetic sight of Lord, it's in your hands. As my hands are up and my heart is up and my mind's up, I will prevail. Drop your hands in the words of Pastor Mike Jackson, not Michael Jackson, Mike Jackson, the coach. Look at your neighbor and say, hands down, down. person down. down. It's a metaphor of defending basketball. If your hands are not up, you can't defend. Hands down, he says man down, but I say person down. Hold your hands up. Hands up. Victory. 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 Hands down. Defeat. It's a simple metaphor that if I'm not praying, I'm expecting to be overcome. But if I keep my prayer up, the enemy don't know how to get in. Put on somebody with a spiritual finger says, I tricked that devil. He thought he had me. But as soon as he came, I came in. Tell him as soon as he came in. Watch it, watch it. Tell him as soon as he came in. Come on, Tracy Bird. I got him up. This is the season to fight for your victory. Claim it in the name of Jesus. Put your praise to purpose. Tell the devil not in my house, but the two-edged sword. Oh my God. I said, Lord, why am I gonna preach this this morning? He said, Clinton, tell them you, you can't preach too much good or more and more in December but it's good to hear more and more in February <laughs> it's just February and I've seen people stand and say God bless them unexpectedly so if God did it in February for them February ain't over yet so I decree and I prophesy February is the month of increase receive it in the name of Jesus I receive it I receive it. Receive it online. Say, February is a month of increase. Hold your hand up and say, I receive it. If you don't want nothing, keep your hand down. But if you want it, reach up high and say, Lord, I receive it. Say, more and more. More money, more money, more money, more money, more money, more money. More joy, more joy, more joy, more joy. More peace, more peace, more peace, more peace. More grace, more grace, more grace. If you're in this room and you're not saved, let me pray for you. You need divine directions for your life. Let me pray over you. Just need God to know that you heard him this morning and he's got me and I got to trust that word. I'm going to hold on to that word and believe for the increase that God is mindful of me. He remembers me. He knows where I am. If I could pray for you just for this moment, I won't move you. No, just hold your hand and say, Pastor, let's pray for me in this prayer. I need increase. I need salvation. 
I need direction. I need healing in my body. Pray with me in this prayer. Father, our hands are up and our hearts are open and minds are turned. The altar is where they stand. And I need you to meet them at that point of reach. Meet us all there. Increase us this year. So the enemy would know that your word is true. And that it's settled in heaven. Let my life be a divine testament of salvation, of healing, of deliverance, of peace, and joy that's unspeakable but full of glory. I want my faith to increase this year. I want my joy to increase. I want my giving to increase. I want to be a recipient to kingdom principles. Bless me in every way. And I decree and declare it is so. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. Mm.